He is the best dressed and most eloquent commentator in the whole of the United States of America. He is America's Oscar Wilde. He is a raconteur extraordinary. He is a lawyer that I'd reach for if I was ever in trouble, God forbid, in the United States of America. He goes by just one name, Lionel, and here he is on the mother of all talk shows. Lionel, uh, I mean, some people can pull that off. Uh, Napoleon, Pele, Maradona, Madonna. Uh, God. Being known only by uh, only one name, God, yes. What's the origin of uh, the one name identity? How have you made it work? Well, you know, it's funny. I uh, First, let me just say how honored I am to be with you. And I'm saying that not uh, not gratuitously, but as as honestly as I can. I am one of your biggest fans. I am an acolyte. I am a follower, and I have nothing but respect for you, good sir. And I want to start off by saying, by wishing you a merry Christmas and a happy holidays to you and your family. Before we get going, and let me just say again, I'm so proud to be here. And I loved your comment regarding the Kennedy assassination. This is your spot. On you were, I, I, I don't want to derail the subject matter. We, I haven't received any list of what we're going to talk about, but, but George, this is what red pilled to use the term many of us. This was an example of something that changed the world, everything. It was the most critical, obvious hit. Ever. They murdered, they whacked, they assassinated, ablated, expurgated, bodlerized, emended from reality a president in front of the world with a precision and a cover up and a conspiracy of conspiracies. I don't know if it could be done again. May I ask you this question, sir? Can you imagine if today everybody had a phone? Would we have had a November 22nd, 1963 if everybody was there? Thousands and thousands of shots triangulating. Badge man, uh, Lucien Sarti, perhaps using the frangible bullet on the grassy knoll. My question to you is, would anything have changed? And I suggest and I submit nothing would have changed even if we had the evidence because there's something about humans that can't accept the obvious. So I'm sorry, I, I you you hit a nerve with me no, sir, I, when it comes to JFK. Yeah, well, it, it is in fact one of the uh, issues I wanted to talk to you about. So uh, don't be apologetic and I'm glad that we're on the same wavelength on this. Uh, oh yes. We are, of course, you, me, Tucker Carlson, we're hardly on the same page politically, but uh, we all agree that something other than Jack Kennedy died that day. Uh, I oh, said yes. last week that it began the death of the, uh, the, the death of the world's love affair with the United States. It might have been unrequited, uh, it might have been undeserved, but the world loved the United States until November of 1963. And there has been no glad, confident mourning for America ever since. That makes it, therefore, an epochal, uh, historical turning point, doesn't it? It does, but I would hope, good sir, that I can qualify to an extent. I would hope that the world is able to differentiate between the United States, my native land, and my government or whatever iteration of government was in existence at that moment. I, I, I hope the two, uh, the same thing goes for the UK or for Scotland or anything. I The, the, the people are in the government is there. But you know, one of the things which is also so important, I think, so is for us to realize then that we were seeing something that was merging of a situation that might not be able to ever exist again, where organized crime, intel, government, military, media, 
uh, a, a what I call a shadow government, an invisible government, a deep state, intel state, ruling class, this perfect merging, which was responsible for that. That's another aspect to add another layer of complexity uh, to this. But I would hope that the world, and I would hope this show encourages us, please do not confuse me and my fellow Americans with our government. <laughs> we, the two are completely different. Yeah, no, uh, yeah very powerfully uh, put, of course. Uh, now, the, uh, I follow your words, millions of them, uh, and, and every one uh, like a red hot coal. Uh, it is the case that you think that Trump is over and should accept it. I saw a piece from you earlier this week in which you, you said he, he needs to step back and enjoy the rest of his life as the eminence Greece. Uh, can you, you may well be right, of course, but uh, can you explain how you reach that, uh, that point, that point of view? I do not believe, well, let, let me see if I can separate and segregate the efficacy of this man. He is, I don't want to say a savant, that, that's the wrong, that's the wrong um, uh, suggestion. He was, we, we have never seen, I have never seen such raw talent as a politician as he had. I have never in my life, and I'll be, this is my 60, I'll, I'll be 65 next year. So I've I've seen some things. I, I thought Reagan was something. I thought Bill Clinton was in my lifetime, but nobody could rock the room like Donald Trump. He had an ability to speak and explicate so perfectly. He did things intuitively, naturally. However, he also exhibited some of the most, un sad to say, some of the most boorish behaviors, which which made him out to be the rusticator and the ruffian, and 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 yet that that blended into his charm. My dear friend George, I think that he is this weird. He he potentiates this patella reaction on the part of people. And he is, no matter what happens, let, let me, if, if I could, and I don't mean to, to speak too much, but let me give you the, the typical reaction between the Democrats and the Republicans. The Democrats say that Trump, excuse me, he's not in office. Yeah, anything but him. But wait a minute. The, the, the Republic is crumbling. Kids are being carted off to be, to be castrated and mutilated and mastectomized. It doesn't matter as long as Trump's gone. That's what he did. He invaded every space of our being. And I'm sorry to say this, but I don't think we can coexist anymore with him. If this has nothing to do with him, maybe it's us. Maybe we're, we're like this attack dog that keeps seeing this trigger. I don't know. But all I know is that it is time for us to reconsider perhaps trying to, to come up with a new coalition. And and in as much as I think he is he is a wonderful person, I don't think he has that oomph that he had last week with NFTs and digital cards. And I, I'm thinking he should have spent the time giving the world his worldview, his vision, his idea, instead of playing golf. And it's it's just a different time. And it pains me to say this. But for his own good, they are not going to stop until he's behind bars. They are not going to stop. They are. It, it's indefatigable, this, 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 this persistence. So I think it's time for the good of him, his family, his health. He's not a young man. And maybe to allow whatever this thing is called the Republican Party, of which I am not. I am a political atheist. I, am, I, I have no affiliation whatsoever. I believe it might be in his best interest and everybody's to sit this one out and perhaps lend lend it his his guiding hand to be the eminence grease, the gray eminence indeed. 
Well, uh, a powerful uh, call coming from, from you. Do you think it will be heeded? Uh, is Trump the kind of guy that agrees to sit out the next dance? Well, if he does not want to, George, he has the party which could decide for him. Let me also say that I'm, I'm not sure how familiar you are, but the governor of my native state of Florida is the bell of the ball, Ron DeSantis. And they are going to chew him up and spit him out. And so he is not going to be anything that they imagine. But let me ask you this right now, George. Let me ask you a question. If Trump were in charge of the country now, do you think we would be in the position right now with Russia and Ukraine? Do you think that China would be flexing its muscles? Do you think the world stage, this wonderful blue marble, do you think things would, this great reset would be as fractious as it is right now if Trump were at the helm, stewarding the helm, I ask you? No, uh, and I'm coming on to Joe Biden uh, at the moment, but I'm, I'm on the record and many times uh, saying that I don't believe that the Ukraine war would have started if Trump had been re-elected as president. I think that the, the complicity of the Democratic Party, so-called, with uh, the elements in Ukraine that have caused this whole disaster uh, is of historic and, and criminal uh, character. And the Hunter Biden laptop was not evidence that I even needed. But now that we know what was on it was true, uh, it's, uh, it's obvious that a profoundly unhealthy situation existed between the Democratic Party leadership and elements in Ukraine that have brought about this perfect storm, bloody and uh, perfect storm. So I, I don't believe so, because I think that Trump's character as, uh, as a deal maker, as a roll up the sleeves, get the waistcoat on, light up the cigars, let's not leave this room until we've resolved this, that kind of approach would have been employed by him. And therefore we would not now be on the, on the brink of, uh, on the eve of destruction as you're too young to remember, Barry Maguire. Said. Oh, Barry Maguire. Barry Maguire, too, too young. I, 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 I don't know of, of whom you speak. Let's say over and over. You, you know, George, there are... Jo uh, Mearsheimer is, is my, my hero in this. George Kennan. I never thought I'd be quoting Henry Kissinger. Noam Chomsky. There is Realpolitik. I am of the United States in 1962, Sir George. We told the Soviet Union, we will go to war with you if you do not remove missiles from Cuba 90 miles away. Now, between you and me, we all know the real issue was Turkey. It's a whole other story. We have the Monroe Doctrine. We would have never, if it were us, if if we were Russia, if Ukraine were, just switched the parties, there would have been no debate whatsoever. We have formalized it into the Monroe Doctrine. You know, Tolstoy said history would be a wonderful thing if only it were true. I also think history would be a wonderful <laughs> thing if people knew it, if people remembered it. They made this, and George, I love, because lest you're called a, a Putin apologist, you know, we my generation still remembers, I, I don't know if you do, uh, Boris and Natasha, I will get you a little squirrel, this Russophobic, red-baiting, post-Cold War, Drago, I will destroy you, the whole Russian countenance, the evil Putin who wants to re who to re reconsolidate the Soviet Union. This is a man who said anybody who doesn't remember or have a a place in their heart for the Soviet Union, brother, doesn't have a heart, and anybody who wants to go back to it doesn't have a brain. 
can we not understand the the this interesting marriage of NATO and Victoria Newland and George Kennan, who was the father of containment, who said once the once the Soviet Union dissolves, that's it. Game's off. And and I mean, seriously, I'm, and when I bring this up, people say, oh, boy, look at, at two, a, a, a Putin apologist, Putin apologist, my God, th th this is, this is realism, this is reality here, what are we talking about? And, and when, and this, this creation, talk about wag the dog and Mr. Kolomoisky, who created Zelensky, this is, this is, if you remember this, this is Chauncey Gardner, this is being there, this is, this, 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 this iteration, this, this creation of this, this t-shirted hero, and I mean, what, oh, have they lost their minds? What movie, what channel am I watching? I'm just looking at reality here. <laughs> I could, I, I, I could, uh, I could listen to you all night, but sadly we're running out of time. Time for only one more question. We've both seen Indeed. a lot of things. 130 years uh, together, we've been on this, earth. <laughs> uh, but we've never seen anything quite like Joe Biden no. in his dotage, have we? No. Uh, uh, the 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 man that doesn't know the difference between millions, billions, and trillions, and if he does know the difference, <laughs> cannot enunciate them. Uh, <laughs> talk of excruciating. What channel is he on? Well, do you remember when we thought that Dan Quayle was? a B ocean because he yes. couldn't spell potato. There was an old joke years ago when they went into George W. Bush and said, President Bush, three Brazilian soldiers are dead. He says, oh my God, that's terrible. By the way, how many in a Brazilian? Well, we laughed at that. <laughs> this man was Niels Bohr compared to this. This was, this is, that you talk about senescent dotage, this, this decrepit coot, this, I, I, I don't know what it is. But then again, George, it's brilliant. Remember the notion of the Manchurian candidate? This is one better. <laughs> this is somebody you put up as a sock puppet, and then whatever is done, you say, would you leave him alone? Would you leave them? He's the president. Okay, but look, enough. Number two in line, Kamala Harris. This cacinating pseudo bulber effect affected uh he hebephrenic this this laugh <laughs> what is this about and the spokesperson Karine jean pierre who makes uh, I, I mean uh professor erwin corey look like uh bernard baruch i mean i've never i we used to talk about well you know woodrow wilson had a stroke that was nothing. This is senescence. This is a man hobbled by some kind of cognitive decrepitude. And, and he says, here's the best part. I'm going to run again. And George, he probably will. <laughs> and you know what the Democrats will do? They say, well, so be it. <laughs> you can't make this up. <laughs>